It is controversial for audiophile whether wide dispersion speakers or narrower dispersion speakers will be better for stereo sound listening. Dr. Floyd Toole has been promoting the wider dispersion speakers are better based on their objective and subjective scientific listening experiments with hundreds, if not thousands of people participated. But their listening lab is using the speaker in mono mode as they claim this is much better for the listener to evaluate the speaker's performance. Back in 1980s Dr. Toole and his team did extensive study and concluded why testing mono mode is better to evaluate the loudspeaker performance. The stereo speaker setup will reduce the speaker's performance difference as this study showed. In other words, speakers will sound better in stereo setup. Now let's take a look how the wider dispersion speaker is behaving for the listener in the mono mode. The wider dispersion of the speaker means it has more omnidirectional sound, or more even sound pressure level, on all direction of the speaker. Here you can see a round circle from the speaker to illustrate the same sound pressure level, or SPL. The listener's two ears are on the same SPL level when the speaker is right in front of the person. Now when the listener is shifting left or right from the center position, we can't see the difference of the direct sound SPL will be very similar, as the round circle is large enough based on the distance from the listener to the speaker. Since the speaker under test is in the center of the front wall, while the room is quite large and very quiet, Harman Speaker Test Lab has RT60 around 0.25 second which is acoustically dead room, the reflections from left and right side walls will have minimum impacts from the listener moving positions, but due to the wide dispersion, some level of the strong off-axis sound can still be reflected to form better sound envelopment effect, so the reviewer will feel better sound performance. Let's take a look for the narrower dispersion of one speaker. Here we can't see an oval shape SPL curve from the speaker to illustrate its narrower directivity. When the listener is moving left or right from the center, we can't see the sound pressure levels will be quite different for the left and the right ears of the listener. For a large and acoustically dead room, the weaker off-axis sound will degrade significantly due to the travel distance and have much less reflection effects. So the direct sound has the major difference for narrower directivity speaker and will have more impact for the reviewer in this situation. The reviewer will feel the sound is dry and thin, even having this so-called in-head localization as the sound is beaming on you. This is what audiophile called in-your-face sound effect. As we drawn on this picture, for multi-channel center speaker application, it is much better to use the wide dispersion speaker, as this will provide wider, and even sound level, for all the listeners in the room. But for stereo sound, it will be completely different situation. Here we can't see the similar wide dispersion speakers for stereo sound. When the listener is moving to the left or right from the center position, there are significant changes for the left and right ears due to the two speaker sound coming from left and right channels. You can see a small head movement on the listener. The phantom center sound imaging will have the wobbling effect and the sound staging will be skewed badly too. This is why Audiophile claims that the wider dispersion speakers do not give them good sound imaging comparing to the narrower dispersion speakers. Let's compare the narrower dispersion speakers in the same situation. As we can't see that the left and right ears will have much less sound pressure level changes when the listener is moving left or right due to the oval shape of the SPL equal level curves. This is why the narrower directivity can provide better sound imaging or better accuracy of the instrument's locations on the sound stage. Arranging the narrower directivity speakers properly, they can also provide wider sweet spot for more listeners in the same room, comparing to the wider directivity speakers for stereo sound listening. Narrower dispersion speakers will have less room reflection impacts as the off-axis sound level is lower, so the sidewall reflections are less. The key is to ensure the off-axis response curve is rolling down smoothly so they do not alter the timber or sound tonality too much. Wider directivity speakers can provide wider soundstage as the room reflections are stronger for spatial cue, while they can provide more accurate timber and sound tonality since the reflected sound has similar frequency response comparing to the direct sound. But if you treat your room to reduce the sound reflection too much, this could significantly affect the tonality as the acoustic treatments may not have even sound absorption performance across the frequency range as we mentioned earlier. So as everything in our life, some trade-off have to be made between sound stage, sound imaging, and sound clarity when you consider the speaker's directivity performance, especially for stereo sound system. Narrower directivity might still be better choice for audiophile as sound clarity and imaging is more critical. The sound stage can be optimized with the speaker's placement in the room by leveraging the sidewall reflections Speakers' tone angles and their distance from the sidewalls are most critical factors for narrower directivity speakers to optimize the sound for the in-room stereo sound listening. 
It is much sensitive for narrower directivity speakers for room placements so you need to use this test tone and be patient if you want to get the best sound from your room. Wider directivity speakers are much easier to be placed in the listening room, but there is much less flexibility for sound clarity and sound imaging adjustment, so it is pretty much depending solely by the speaker's own performance. To optimize the sound stage and sound imaging, the distance between the two speakers is most critical for wider dispersion speakers. To minimize the phantom center imaging wobbling problem, you shall place the two speakers closer to minimize the issue we mentioned on this episode. This shall also give you more space to the sidewalls, so the reflections are managed to provide more spaciousness effects. You can also minimize the need for room treatment in this placement, as the strong wide dispersion speakers off axis sound can be reduced properly. Since for multi-channel music and home theater listening, you have the center speaker to anchor the center sound imaging, so the front and surround sound speakers can use wider dispersion speakers if you want to have more ambient sound effect. You can also use the narrower dispersion speakers for both front and surround sound speakers if you prefer better clarity and localization for the music. Both cases will give you much better sound envelopment than the stereo sound, with much better spaciousness due to the dedicated surround sound speakers to provide ambient sound environment. But make sure you can minimize the room reflection, as we discussed in earlier episode. For multi-channel listening, you need our T60 below 0.3 second to get better multi-channel sound clarity, as the room reflections will blur the multi-channel sound much worse than stereo sound. For stereo sound listening, you shall keep our T60 between 0.3 and 0.6 second to get better sound experience. Enjoy listening.